Welcome to New York Got Game. Back with another edition of New York Got Game, the best show covering all of New York basketball. And what a week for Jalen Brunson, who was named the 36th captain in Knicks team history. Salute to Jalen. He's shown great leadership with this team in his two seasons as a Nick. And it was nice to see the press conference on Thursday that the Knicks had for him and a video tribute from New York sports legends and fellow captains. So great stuff, great honor for Jalen Brunson. But we're moving along in the NBA offseason. The WNBA returns on August 15th with the Liberty resuming their season out in Los Angeles against the Sparks on Thursday. So we're going to get back into Liberty talk very soon. But today we're going to pivot just a little bit. We're going to do it with a special guest. So let's get into it right now. The Knicks are heating up. Okay, we're in the dog days of summer where the streetball tournaments, they're heating up. The WNBA season returns after the Olympics, and we're awaiting the return of the NBA in the fall. So now it's a good time as ever to take a look at the state of New York basketball. So let's do it with a man who knows New York hoops. He's representing Westchester to the fullest. One of the best digital content creators covering hoops in the Big Apple. My guy. Arden Franklin. Ooh, what's good, y'all? What's up? What's up? Thank you for the intro. I'm happy to be here. Man, happy to have you here. It's good. We've kind of known each other in yes. circles. We were talking about this. For a this long time. For a long, long time, time. But didn't connect till we were at a Liberty game yeah. last month. And yep. we got to talk. And then we were talking. I said, man, you got to come up. We got to talk some New York hoops. And here you are. Absolutely. But you told me you were thinking about coming up here. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Like I told you, man, I've been watching the show since it first launched. And the episodes are always dope, you know. Haven't been familiar with, you know, your career for a while. I know how much of a great storyteller you are, how much you truly care about covering the game. And there was just a lot of mutual connections that we had. So when I saw the show debut and it's like, wow, like, oh, you got my homegirl Gigi up here. I see Christina, Brian and the the rest of the crew. I was like, man, that's really dope. And I remember watching and I I was was like, hmm, maybe one day I'll be up there. Well, and and today's today's the day. day. We're here. (laughs) We're here. Today's the day. You're in the building. It's good. How's your summer going? Everything going good? Yeah, summer's been great. Very busy. You know, there's, there's some reasons why that we'll talk about in a bit. Yes, we'll talk but, about uh, that. But it's been a very busy and productive summer. A good balance between work, you know, working at the job, personal projects that have had a lot of great development, quality time with family and friends. You Always know, important. that is very important, that, you know, yep. as we get older. Um, but it's, it's definitely been one of my favorite summers in a while, you know, and, like and I'm very happy with how it's been going. I like that. Blessed, favorite summers in a while. I like that quality time with the people Thank you love. You. That's Thank always you. Yes. important. Okay. Let's start with this because we're going to have a good conversation around mm-hmm. New York basketball. I want to start with vibes. Yeah. Okay. When you look at the New York basketball landscape, what do you think the vibes are right now when it comes to NYC hoops? What's the vibes for you right now? Oh, man, it's, it's very much optimistic. You know, like a lot of people were willing to say for a while, you know, New York City basketball or New York basketball as a whole is down. But, you know, we back. You feel me? We back. We, we productive. We're coming off a season where we had, you know, three McDonald's All-Americans, you know, on the high school level. Right. There's a lot of excitement on the college level. But what St. John's is doing right for them is improving. And then on the NBA level. Right. You know, got to give a lot of love to the Knicks. You know, the Knicks are giving the city a lot of hope. And then, of course, in the W, the Liberty legit title contenders. So I think right now there's a lot of optimism, right? Because basketball here is finally being competitive on all levels at the same time. There's a lot of emerging talent. Um, The city finally has a nice, healthy amount of star talent that's here, talent that's recognized all across the country, whether we're talking about a Jalen Brunson to a Brianna Stewart, Sabrina U.S. School to even a Julius Randle. Um, so I think New York right now is in a very great, st- uh, great spot, right? It's very optimistic. I think so. And I think it's sometimes hard for us as sports fans. Like, we forget. We have short-term memories sometimes. Yeah. Not Go back, I don't know, four years, five years ago. It, it was wasn't, rough. It, wasn't, it was rough. See, you said it. It was rough. It was, it was, rough. It was scary hours. It was scary, scary hours, hours out, out here. here, man. There wasn't a lot of hope in the city, you know, or just New York as a whole. And right now, you got to embrace it. Like, I'm somebody that, you know, besides being a Liberty fan, um, I'm not necessarily like an overall New York basketball fan in terms of like teams, but I'm fans of players and what they do and coaches. And I just look all across the board and it's like at every level, there's legitimate talent and programs to be fans of and to legitimately root for. And it's like, you can't, you can't go wrong with that. You know, like even with the Knicks, like I, you know, I'm not a Knicks fan, but like, I love Jalen Brunson. It's so fun rooting for Jalen Brunson because of what he's brought to the city and what he represents. And at the end of the day, I am a New Yorker. 
proud New Yorker. So anybody that's repping New York and making us look good on a big stage, I'm always going to be behind them, always. Got to be behind that. I want to ask you about this, too, because I talked about this at yeah. the top of the show. Jalen Brunson named the 36th captain in Knicks yes. history. What did you think of that? Yes. I thought it was a pretty dope honor for him to Absolutely. get that. What did you make of that? And do you think that matters at all? Does that matter for the team going forward to have somebody that's officially named captain? Because I think we all looked at him as yeah. the captain before this. But does it matter? In yeah, I, I would say from a team standpoint, no. Because, again, right, it's like what you just acknowledged, right? Like, folks know he's the captain of the team. He's the leader. But I think in terms of his legacy, you know, I think Brunson's off to a great start to having one of the more cherished legacies as a Knicks player of all time. And that's saying a lot because say what you want about the Knicks – the Knicks do have a storied history with a lot of greats. And I think Brunson already is climbing up that all-time list of, like, great Knicks. And I think for him to have, right, the leader of captain be legitimized, I think is special, right? And plus, in New York, it hits different when you're considered a captain, right? Like, you look all across the board, right? Jeter and now Judge, right? Like, captain of the Yankees, right? You think about players who play for the Rangers, whether it's a Henrik Lundqvist or even Mark Messier, like, captain, right? It hits different when you're a captain in New York and you have that acknowledgement and like people absolutely want to cheer for you and respect what you do. So I think it's great in terms of legacy and what it does for the fans. Nah, that makes a lot of sense. So talking about that, we got to get into some Knicks hoops too, because yeah. this, ha this was recent on the show. This is not mm -hmm. even me going, I think this was our last episode actually. Yeah. Talk to some Knicks fans lately who look, they're feeling a little froggy, Arden. Ooh. They are on the hype train. Now, I know you yes, told me you yes. are not a Knicks fan, but mm -mm. you like to see New York represented well. Absolutely. And we had a guest here. It was on our last <laughs> episode. He said the Knicks are going to win the 2025 NBA Dang. title. Are you willing to say it, maybe with your chest, that the Knicks will win it all next year? Are you willing to go that far? Listen, with, with my chest, <laughs> I'm saying no. They're not going all the way next year, but I do expect them to compete for the championship. I think they can make it back to the conference finals. Um, I think when it's all said and done, uh, the Eastern Conference, they still have a couple people at the top that I think will outlast them. But I also would say this. If the Knicks did make it to the finals, it wouldn't surprise me. If they won the championship next year, it wouldn't surprise me. I do think what they have, right, besides having a legitimate number one option in Jalen Jay Brunson, who I think could take a team to the championship, their depth is nuts, right? The Nova crew is back together. Knicks fans, it's going to be a great year for you to pay homage to Julius Randle. I really believe that. Um, and I just think, you know, this is a team that has chemistry, and they're very tough. I think Tibbs has gotten better as a coach, which is huge, because I think before Tibbs has always been a respected coach. You know if you hire him, like, you're going to get better. But it felt like there was, like, a ceiling on him, right? Like, maybe you get better, but you won't make it further than, a con uh, not the conference finals, the semifinals. Now you know he could take a team to the conference finals, and he's not that far away from getting to the finals. So I'm, I'm not there yet to say the Knicks are going to win the chip, <laughs> but I do consider them very much so a top eight team in the league. I do consider them one of the very few legitimate title contenders. I will say that. And again, if they make it to the finals, let alone win the finals, on everything I love, it would not surprise me. It really wouldn't. Here's the thing. If they make it to the finals... Or I'm going to take it a step further. If they win the finals, people are going to find that clip where you said, nah, hey. I don't think they're going to win. Hey, and they're that's gonna fine. Come that's a part you. of the game we love. This you know, it's a, it's a part of the game. You know, at the end of the day, there's only one New York team I expect to win the chip very soon, and that's the New York Liberty. I think that's, that's fair. That's the only team I expect. And if the Knicks want to be second, great. If they end up being first, great. But I'm going to stand on business. I think they're going to compete for a title, but I'm expecting the Liberty to be the first basketball team out of everyone in New York to actually bring a title home. Okay, and we're going to get to the Liberty in a little bit, too. Something else you said there that I thought was really interesting. You said you think the Knicks fans should pay a little bit more homage I don't yes. know, to Julius Randle. Yes. Do you feel like Julius Randle, because of, I will call it, the playoff transgressions, the playoff struggles that he's had, do you think he's been a little bit disrespected, and do you think people are forgetting what he can do? And I'm assuming you also expect him to be a really major part of what this absolutely, team does. Absolutely, absolutely. And listen, right, like, you know, accountability is key. So, you know, he has to be held accountable for his postseason struggles. But at the end of the day, the dude is still a walk-in, what, 24 and 10, all NBA caliber of talent. You know, Knicks fans, you got to remember – you know, those type of players don't, you know, grow on trees, B. You know, you can't just get a player like that, right? And I think he is somebody that also has proven to play very well with Brunson. 
Um, he's somebody that could, you know, relieve Brunson of some of his responsibilities on the offensive end of the floor. He's somebody that also gets a lot of attention from defenses, and I think he's going to play a very pivotal part. And I think, again, right, there's a lot of hype with the Nova Knicks and what a healthy Mitchell Robinson can do mm -hmm. and the Deuce McBride, et cetera. I get all of that, and that's fair. But to me, if the Knicks are going to do anything that involves championship aspir aspirations, I am willing to say Julius Randle is the key. Bottom line, he is the key. He stays healthy. He continues to play at an all-NBA level. Once again, we're not just talking all-star. All-NBA all level. One of 15 best players One in the league. One of 15 best players twice. in the country, which he's done twice. Right. If he could play at that level and just somewhat better his postseason performance, right. that's how you're going to be able to compete for a championship, let alone win one. If he doesn't, I'm sorry. Just get ready for another semifinals, conference finals appearance. But you're not winning that Larry O'Brien. You're not going to get close to it. All right. It's a lot is on Randall there, but you, you believe in him, and Knicks fans should put a little bit more Yeah, plus shout out to him, man. Did you know, I see the, the sketch of shoes. They're looking a little better bit by bit. He's taking that <laughs> chance in life, you know, so he can do that. I'm going to do that with him, too. Sketchers is a chance and a choice. That's, yeah, that's a chance. Yeah, it's a chance and a choice. <laughs> choice. They're looking a little better, champ. I, I'm not going to get mad at him. Hey, listen, in them, anything we do in life, playing basketball, creating content, Yep. Oh, you're asking for a little bit of improvement, right? You exactly. try to get better every day. Try to get exactly. better at your craft every day. I'm not sure this team will get better. We're going to talk about now. That's the Brooklyn Nets. They are in rebuild mode. To say and the least. To say the least. Some people think the next season could be rough for Brooklyn fans. Scary. Scary hours in a different way, yep. right? Should the Nets go all in on tanking and tanking for Cooper Flag Because you've seen Cooper Flag hoop. Uh -huh. That man can ball. Absolutely. Should the Nets be all in for Cooper Flag here? Nets fans? <laughs> Nets fans. Yes. Go all in. All in. Empty the savings. Empty whatever you got and go all in on tanking for Cooper Flag. It's about that time. And listen, let me, let me tell folks this too, right? And this is the absolute truth when you think about life in the NBA. There's one place you don't want to be in the NBA, and that's the middle. Because there's no room for growth. And I think if you're the Nets, you're in danger of being in the middle if you have this false belief that you can compete by just making a couple moves to get you there. You are clearly destined to be at the bottom. And that's okay. There are perks to being at the bottom, right? You can get that top pick or a top pick. You can, you know, see what young talent you have. I'm still very much a part of Cam Thomas Hive, always and forever. That's my guy. And I think if you are the Nets, you have to realize now is the time to truly let it go, right? And, 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 and in a way, end the era, right? End the era that goes back to KD, Kyrie, and Harden when, when you were trying to go all in, right? After, you know, the D'Angelo Russell-led Nets days and, okay, cool, we want to make that jump and not just be the friendly 500 team to root for. You try to go all in, it didn't work, and I think you need to completely close the door on that. So whoever could give you a chance to compete in all seriousness, you need to trade them. Trade them. Trade Get Ben Simmons if possible. I know y'all love Nick Claxton. Personally, get him out of here. You need to embrace tanking and realize for next year's class, and I was just talking to one of my good friends about this on our pod. Shout out to my good brother, Mo Richardson, man. Shout out um, to Mo. I was talking to him about how, like, the 25 draft, that draft could be, you know, compared to 03 to 96 to 84. If you know, you know. Like, it has that type of class where up to 20 cats in that first round could be actual star talent, right? And folks talk about Cooper Flag, but you got VJ Edgecombe, you got Boogie Flynn, you got Ian Jackson, you got Drake Powell, you got so many people in that class that's elite. If you're the Nets, you have to be licking your lips at being able to grab one of those players, especially if you're in the top five. So absolutely, they got to go all in. All in on the tanking. See, so some Nets fans may not want to hear that. but and You got to embrace it. Embrace you don't want to be stuck in the middle. You don't want to be stuck no, in the middle. That is not the place that you want to be in the NBA. You're definitely right about that. Let's keep it in the Barclays Center. Yes. And I think that the both of us, you and I, would agree that the Liberty you have legit championship aspirations. Mm -hmm. You said this. You expect them in terms of being the New York team that's closest Absolutely. to winning a championship. Now, currently, at this point of us speaking, at the Olympic break just concluding, and they'll get started later this week, mm -hmm. they currently have the best record in the W. You. So here's the thing. They've got the best record in the W. We know this. Yes. You talk to some people, and they'll say, yeah, but the Aces are still the defending champs. 
They're still the best team in the league. They have the best player, undoubtedly, in the league in Asia Wilson. Easily. So my question to you is very simple. You think the Liberty are close. You think they're knocking yep. on the door. Do they get the job done this year, and do they win it all? Does it, does it happen for Liberty here in 2024? Will they be hoisting the trophy when it's all said and done? I really believe it. I really do. And I think it's because this team that's been constructed this year, I think there are two things. A, I think they're a lot more mentally tougher. And I think B, their overall performance as a team is much better, right? And I think, again, right, for the folks watching Liberty, you know about the big names. You know about a Brianna Stewart. You know about a Sabrina Uescu. You know about a John Quell Jones, right? Out of those big three, two of them have been MVP winners. All know what it means to be an all-star. Um, but I think this team has great depth, right? You know, I think about, you know, Kayla Thornton and what she's done for this team, right? It's been big time, right? But Najalini Hamilton is a big time player, right? Sloot, a very dependable veteran guard. And they have a bench that now has wings that can shoot the three a bit and be very put together. And I think they're playing with a bit more intensity and, and understanding of the moment, right? And I have a lot of respect for the Aces. Again, they're, you know, the back-to-back -back champs for a reason. Asia Wilson is clearly the greatest women's player in the world, one of the greatest players, period, regardless of gender and background. But I just, I can't see the Aces winning three in a row, right? Because at the end of the day, champion fatigue is legit. Um, and I also think for the Liberty last year, at the end of the day for them, they were one shot and less than eight seconds away from forcing a decisive game five, you know, against the Aces and Las Vegas. So to me, it's like you're literally this close to being champions. And they've played with a lot of great pace this year. They've had a great amount of uh, examples of just versatility. I love the development in Sabrina's game as a ball handler, as somebody that's also taking a little more pride on defense. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't hurt to have the reigning MVP on your team. So I really believe in the Liberty doing what they need to do this year. And I think there's a real sense of urgency with them to get the job done. I felt that from them. The word you just used there, that the term, I should say, sense of urgency yeah. to get the job. And you kind of felt it at the beginning of the season from training camp. The players were talking about this. You're starting to see that with that sense of urgency. And as they come out the break, they play the Sparks and then they play the Aces. Yep. So there's big they got time the matchups. Wings too, and that's going to be a good uh, early post, you know, all-star break, all-star, well, all-star and Olympic break. All-star and Olympic break. Yeah. So they got those teams coming out and everybody's going to circle the Aces. And you're right to mention mm -hmm. the Wings as well, too. How important is it that they keep their foot on the gas and try to get home court advantage, have that best record throughout? Because that could also be a difference in the finals. You talked about how close they were in that game four, yes. one shot away. Yep. How important is it that they lock up home court throughout and finish with the best record in the league? Very important. You know, again, you know, like we both know, Dexter, like momentum is real. Momentum is very real, and you want to have legitimate momentum during the second half of the season, especially in a W season where, right, you think about it, right, they're going to come back from, you know, Olympic break, and what, there's probably going to be, what, maybe a month or so, maybe a month and a half at most before the playoffs begin. So there's not a lot of time, and you don't have room to have a stretch where out of five games you lose three or lose four out of five, and you talk about struggles. Like, they have to hit the break the same way they hit the first half, which is fast, successful, and, and jumping out the gate. And you need that home court, right? Because, again, odds are the Liberty and the Aces will run it back. And home court for the Liberty will be a very, very big deal, right? And I think when it's all said and done for them, if it does go down to a game five, you'd rather have it at Barclays. And, you know, again, not a, not a diss to Nets fans here, but, like, Barclays for Liberty games, like, you know. Yo, not the same. Not, not the same. same. Not so the same. much more fun. So much more fun, right? Not At the end the of the day, you're talking about 17, at least 17,000 people in Barclays rooting for the Liberty, creating a real home court advantage. We felt the building shake. We Facts. felt that energy. And if you're the Liberty, you just don't want that for games three and four. You want that for one and two, and you want it for a game five if needed. But I think, again, just to answer the question, they have to hit the ground running. They have to hit the ground running. If you're Sabrina and Stewie, you should have a gold medal rush for what you just did and go crazy. If you're John Quell and Benaja and Kayla and, and Sab and everybody else, Sloot, you should be well rested and ready to go. Now is the time. Now is the time. We'll see what the Liberty do in this. Okay, so we're into the second half, mm -hmm. but post-Olympic All-Star break, we'll see what they can do. I want to get over to college hoops with you. Yes. Because when it came to college hoops this past season, we saw Rick Pitino. Yeah. Brought a lot of excitement back yeah. to St. John's that we didn't see in quite some time. But with all that excitement, 
The men's basketball team, St. John's, they failed to make the NCAA tournament. They did. Year two is almost sometimes, I think, with a lot of programs in college basketball, you can really see the impact of a coach. Mm -hmm. What do you think the Johnnies can accomplish, excuse me, in year two under Patino? I think it's a matter of producing much better guard play and I think a bit more displays of athleticism. You know, at the end of the day, right, they missed the tournament last year. But, you know, they won 20 games, you know, and, and that's a number that a lot of recent Red Storm teams was not hitting in terms of wins, right? And they, and they had their fair share of games where they were competing. And, you know, just like I was at the Garden for those games, I know you were at the Garden for those games, and there was a great energy when Patino walked out. Um, and I think for them, right, the Johnnies entered this season, I think, with real expectations of competing. Um, I agree with some people where, you know, based on how everything shapes out, I think they should have real aspirations of being a top 25 team because I love what they did with the transfer portal, right? You know, they got, you know, Kaji Richards, uh, Richmond from St. Seton Hall, which is big time, right? I like the addition of Aaron Scott. I like the addition of, um, what's his name, Devon Smith, right? So they increased their guard play by quite a bit, right? You hope Simeon Welcher, who last year was the highest rated recruit that they got in a long time, has a nice jump in his sophomore year. So when I look at the Johnnies, I look at them being like, okay, you have Patino and that staff that's coming back. You've improved your guard play by a lot. They even got the big out of the transfer, Vincent I, who played at U, uh, USC 7-1-2-20. He could shoot the ball. He could shoot the ball, mm-hmm. too, and has that size. The Johnnies should be ready to compete and make the tournament, right? And if they became a top 25 team this year, it wouldn't surprise me. And, again, there's a lot of changes, right? There's no, you know, Joel Soriano. There's no Lud Hug. There's no J- Jenkins and, and others there. But you came back wiser, you have a bigger backcourt, and you have more experience all across the board. And, you're, and if you're Patino, you could finally be like, okay, this is my team. Right. These are my players. These are my, my players. These are my guys. And at the end of the day, you are coming off a 20-win season, and you won a couple games in the Big East tournament. Yeah. And you won a couple games, right? And you know what? They also didn't look too bad against the eventual back-to-back national champion, UConn, in the Big East tournament. So I think – there's a lot of expectation and a lot of hope, well-deserved hope for the Johnnies, and it's just about them cashing in on it. All right, we will see what they can do. I'm excited about St. John's basketball coming up. We're going to get to more of that in the coming weeks. And, Arden, we're going to go over to high school because I know yeah. you and I, I had a long early part of my career covering yeah. high school basketball. I'm not as plugged in as I used to be. Yeah. But you're somebody who is. You watch and cover high school hoops. Yeah. And just the previous week before this, almost two weeks ago, we saw Carmelo Anthony's son. Kai and Anthony plays for Lou High. Yeah. Guys, if you have not checked this man out, he's, he's wa- different. He's different. He's, he's a walking bucket. He's a walking bucket yes. out here. He is now ranked the number one high school player in New York State for the class of 2025. I just called him a walking bucket. Yep. You said he's different. Yep. What do you think of Kyan's game? And how good he can be. And, and when I say how good he could be, what I mean is how does that translate beyond high school? We've seen him tearing up high school competition, but how do you see his game translating beyond that? I see him doing very well on the college level, and I expect to see him in two years in the NBA, honestly speaking. I think for Kai, right, again, right, the, the walking bucket term is not just something to say just to be cool. Like, we're, we're serious. He is a walking bucket. I've seen him in various games, whether it's at Lou High playing silly AAU games with Rod Wave lead and all-star games where he is truly a bucket. He can shoot the three ball. He's getting more athletic. He's finishing at the basket very well, right? He's understanding the importance of the mid-range game, and he's able to score on all three levels. There's a lot of times where I watch Kai play, and I'm like, damn, like, you look just like your daddy. Like, you know how to play the game, and he's getting taller. I think at this point he's around 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and I think for him to make it to the college level, well, not to make it because he will, but to be impactful on a college level, it's going to be a matter of, again, just continuing to master multi-level scoring, especially off the ball, right? Because mm. odds are he's going to go to a program where they may have a lead guard or two, and Kai is getting a great experience at playing off ball, right, because he's playing at Lou High, where even this year, right, they have Nigel James, who's going to Marquette. They have the Mingo brothers, both four- and five-star recruits in their, in their respective classes. Last year, he played with VJ Edgecombe, the reigning Gatorade State Player of the Year, and who's likely to be a top-five pick out of Baylor next year in the draft. So he was successful playing off the ball. And I think the more he's successful playing off the ball, mastering the catch and shoot, embracing life on defense, which he's starting to, right, because Lou High isn't a top five team for, uh, for a reason. They're, they're top five legitimately for a lot of that. He's going to be just fine. And I think as long as he also masters his on-ball game, scoring off the dribble, he's going to be a beast. And it helps that he grew up here in New York. 
Like, people forget, before he went to Luha, he played at Christ the King. Right. And he's really been outside, and he's played at these different back uh, playgrounds and stuff like that. Kai is very legit. Like, it's not just because he's Carmelo's son. It's because people understand Kai for Kai. I, he is him. I, I, wanted, I wanted you to talk about that a little bit more, because when you say that, like, it matters that he grew up and played in New York. And I know what that means, because you're at these different parks. You're yeah. in these different tournaments. Yeah. It means something to show up and show out yep. in certain places. You've seen that maturity in his game as, mm-hmm. he's, as he's moving forward. You've seen that. Absolutely. And, you know, playing here in New York, especially during the summer, right, those are some of the greatest battles you can have, right, versus guards who, regardless of where they are in terms of clout and status, they're just as good as you. And they're going to look at you as an opportunity to build up their name because they know you're coming in with the hype, right, and you're playing in front of folks, essentially the culture, right, who can make or break your name. And I think for Kai, being the type of player that he's been, Right, he hasn't run away from those games. He's played in a lot of those games. I think that has been very instrumental to his development. Right, and Carmelo and, and Lala, like they've embraced that. Like he needs to be outside. He needs to play in these games. Kai has embraced that because it can be very easy for him to not do that. He can not. He can say, yeah, "I don't want to show." Yeah, up I don't. Time. I don't want to show up to these games. Like I'm good. Like I play at Luha again, top five team in the, in the country on the high school level. Right, I play EYBL. I'm good. Like I don't got to do none of this. And he does, and he shows out, and it only legitimizes him in a way. He's not protected in terms of like, oh, he can't play. No, he can play. He chooses to. He competes, and he's a real New York Hooper. Like even if he wasn't Carmelo's son, or if his last name wasn't Anthony. I still think he would get the reputation that he has because he's a legitimate player. Yeah. The way he scores, his attitude is different with him. He would be another one of those guys that we would be proudly referring to when talking about why New York basketball is in a really good spot right now. Yeah, I think he's part of that undoubtedly for sure. I want to take it over to girls high school hoops because yeah. we have not, at least on this show, we haven't talked a lot about girls hoops in New York mm-hmm. City. And we will later this month. We have a special guest coming yeah. to talk a lot about that. But when in terms of girls' high school basketball, who's the best hooper right now that you've seen in the city and what sets her apart from the rest of the other ladies that you've seen in NYC right now? Oh, yeah, easily. It's uh, Olivia Visco. She's a class, I believe, 2025, number one player in New York City, five-star, who plays at Christ the King. Um, she reminds me a bit of, like, Asia Wilson and, like, prime Al Jefferson in terms of, like, being a big, who may not be the most athletic, but they have size, they have really good footwork, able to finish around the basket um she too is another one of those players where the status does not get to her head she is outside playing i saw her at dykeman a couple months ago playing uh in the program classic um she constantly plays and she's again a very skillful player that's doing a lot of great stuff and i think olivia's holding it down for the city right now so i would definitely say olivia visco from christ the king all right olivia visco keep your eye on her out there playing at the program classic i didn't get to come up to that and check that out yeah. shout out to the, the everybody running stuff yes. with the program yes. they do great shout work out to them. they actually came on here with me yes. they do great stuff there and yes. so yeah good she was outside up at dykeman playing yep. that's good last year boogie flant who has been on the show. He yeah. was the first high school athlete that was on this show. Yeah. We had Boogie Flan up here. He was sitting right where Boogie. you sat. And Boogie now is going to be playing at Arkansas. But last yep. year, he was recognized by many people as the best player in the Big Apple. Yep. Now his college uh, talents. He's going to go play yep. ball at Arkansas. So with him gone, who's the best boys player in New York City? Is it somebody you already mentioned? Is it Kai and Anthony? It's Kai. Somebody else? To me, right, it's, so it's Kai. Kai. It's Kai, but at the same time, there's a lot of great players across the city. You know, I think about, you know, I think about, again, the Domingo brothers that are playing at Luha. I think about, you know, St. Ray's in particular, right? St. Ray's has a lot of talent with, you know, Anderson Diaz, who is up next, Ty Turner, Brandon Storage Jr., you know, Cardinal Hayes, right? They got Magic Mel Thomas, you know, he's playing well and doing his thing, right? And you got Nazareth, who has a lot of great talent, right? They got my guy Holland Rakins, a really good big um, that could play a lot as well. So I think... Kai is definitely the number one player, in my opinion, but there's a lot of great talent. And there's even talent that's not currently playing in New York, but they're from New York, right? I think about a Chris Jeffrey, Mm -hmm. who's rising four-star, right? You can see him cooking up and going crazy, playing in New York versus New York for Gersh Park, doing what he's doing. So the city's in a great spot. 
But you know, when you mention Boogie, I always got to say this. It's a 914 thing. Uh, Archbishop Stepanak, we here. Stepanak this year <laughs> is going to go crazy. You know, shout out to Coach Masseroni and the staff. But you know, Danny Carbuccia, four star guard from the Dominican yep. Republic. J- uh, Josiah Jarvis, a really great senior guard on the way. Right, we have uh, Jose Rivera, six five, six six, sophomore I like, guard. I like how you, I like you slid the we in there you for the nine one four. I see. Yeah, <laughs> man, the the raft of twins, they're looking great. There's a lot of great talent for Stepanak. Right, they too was a nationally ranked program last yep. year, top twenty, and you know they're they're playing in a very great league in the CHSAA. You know, again, St. Ray's, Iona Prep, Cardinal Hayes. You know, the list goes on and on. And and then another player to look for as well, Osako from St. Francis Prep. He's legit. He's going to be a five-star from the city very soon. He reminds me of like a baby Julius Randle with how he plays, and he's mm-hmm. legitimate. He's also played on a lot of the best circuits. He currently, uh, not currently, he played at New York, Richard, New York this summer for Lincoln Park before they got eliminated from the playoffs. So the city's in a great spot right now. New York in general is, is up for, is up for a, another great run. Uh, just Westchester, New York City, got to represent our friends and, you know, Upstate, they got a lot of bucket getters in Albany yeah. and Glens Falls, but we looking good right now. But I had to pluck stuff in that, of course. It's a nine one four thing. What a shock! It's a nine one four thing, man. Always. What a shock! The one thing, the one thing I'm hearing when I talk about high school basketball on the boys' side in New York, maybe it's all over. Maybe it's on the girls' side too. You are definitely hearing a lot of the Catholic programs. You're not hearing yeah. as much. PSAL, and I'm, I'm wondering yeah. when the talent starts to shift a little bit back yeah. there uh, to the public school side. But you're definitely a lot of talent. There's a lot of good players right now in terms of boys and girls hoops yeah. going on. Now, you mentioned you just talked about Gersh Park. Yeah. I don't get to watch a lot of summer basketball yeah. as much as I used to, Arden. Yeah. But, man. And New Yorkers know this. I used to love going around the city, hitting mm-hmm. the different parks, catch some of the best tournaments. Yeah. So I got to ask you this, because everybody's got a different opinion on this. But in your opinion, what's the best park to watch summer hoops in in New York City and why? This one place you got to go, watch a game, where are you going? I would say if there's one place you got to go and it's like, yo, it's practically a guaranteed good time, Dykeman got it right now. You know, right now, Dykeman it's Park is Dykeman, right? I think for a newer generation, Dykeman is their rucker park in terms of this is where you got to go if you want to see great talent, great competition, and just be in a very electrifying environment. So I, I got to give it to Dykeman. But I think just in general, there's a lot of great parks. You know, like for me personally, in terms of the, the places I get to stop by, it's definitely Dykeman. But I love what my folks at, at Hoops in the Sun got going on. Oh, Hoops but in the Sun, Ryan. classic. Yeah, classic, classic at classic. Orchard Beach. Shout out to Randy and Joe Cruz and their team, Shout out man. To Randy I and absolutely Joe. love what they got going on. Um, I love always stopping by the cage and seeing what's happening at West 4th. Um, you know, again, Gersh Park itself is an actually great run that's happening my good folks over at Pro City, what, what they're doing at LIU Brooklyn, um, yep. Aaron and the crew there. So, again, I think when it's all said and done, whether it's to a fellow New Yorker or somebody not from here, and they go, look, I only have one place to go to watch New York hoops, I got to say, you got to go to Dykeman. You got I, to. But if you got more time, I'm going to give you all of those names and then some. But if game on the line, you got to go to Dykeman. Dykeman yeah. just got it right now. Yeah, I think they do. And I, you've seen sort of that shift. I think my generation coming up, it was definitely Rucker. Yeah. And you've sort of seen the shift. And obviously, we know we're going to shout out Rucker because Rucker's iconic Always and forever. legendary. Yeah. Rest in peace to Greg Marius. Absolutely. Uh, for sure. But you're starting to see that shift. And I was glad to see you mention like Nike Pro City, which yep. I love and where they've been running and obviously doing their things now at LIU. Yep. But I've been rocking with Pro City for a minute that's yep. a great place if you want to see some good summer basketball see some pros yeah. come through. that's always a great yeah place. they so, had they had a, quite a few pros this summer you know like yeah. they had bones highland from the clippers you I know saw he, he pulled up mm-hmm. um julian champagne you know he pulled up you know they had kyle anderson they pro city has a really good run man and you know i'll, I'll, I'll make an effort to stop by whenever i can it also helps you know, they, they do their games on a, at a, on a part of the week that I'm able to get to. It's yes. like Monday nights <laughs> yes. and stuff like that. So it's like I could get there. But again, it's just a very good time for New York City hoops yeah. on the summertime. And even just outside of the city, again, right? I can't say I'm a 914 guy, Here man. We go. Ferris <laughs> World Bowl. Ferris World Bowl. Yep. Shout out to Ferris World Bowl and the crew there. They're having a great summer as well. Um, it's a league that has been around for a while, like decades but the last two summers, maybe three, I feel like they've gotten a new wave of relevancy. Because, um, again, great talent, great environment there, great staff. 
And heck, even right now, as we talk, right, they're having their championship game at the Westchester County Center. I saw that. You know, and that's huge, that's huge, right? And it's yeah. like not many people can do that. And it's again, like, there's a lot of great summer runs happening right now that for anybody that loves hoops, you should go. Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's free 99. It's a great part of the community. And you're able to see basketball in its purest form, which is meant to be played outside without all the glitz and the glamour, playing in front of the people, for the people. It doesn't get better than that. Yeah. If you really love basketball, I'm going to harp on that again. If you love New York mm-hmm. basketball, check out some of these parks that already mentioned because there's really great basketball. And it's all over the city, Gersh yeah. and East Brooklyn. Yep. Um, and they're doing a great job there, too. So I got to shout everybody out there mm-hmm. because everybody's doing a fantastic job. And I got to pull up to more games. I haven't been doing Me that recently. I got to get back to Me some more games. Too. All right, last thing before I get you out of here. Yeah. We got to let the people know. This man, Arden, he does work with Fanatics. Yeah. And they are having the first ever immersive sports fan festival. It's going to be yeah. called Fanatics Fest. It is going down August 16th to the 18th at the Javis Center, which is major, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of major events happen at the Javis Center. This man is a part of it. Yes. Can you tell us more about this and why sports fans should come out, show out for this event? Why should they come out, Arden? You know, for an event of this magnitude, right, I think when it's all said and done for the fans out there, as hyperpolar as it seems to be like, oh, like, you know, it's just the first ever, it's the truth, right? It is literally the first ever immersive sports festival where if you're somebody that loves sports, if you love culture, if you love uh, collecting through various ways, this is the event for you, right? When you think about the opportunity to come see or meet and greet your favorite athletes, right, such as a Jalen Brunson, uh, Derek Jeter, the Manning brothers, Tom Brady, Kevin Durant, Anthony Edwards, Sabrina Uesco, the list goes on and on. For you to be able to see them up close through great conversations or great meet and greets, you don't often get to have that opportunity, right? And then you think about, okay, the biggest leagues and brands in the world are going to have these incredible activations where you could test out your skills. You and the homies been arguing who's the fastest, go by the NFL activation, run the 40-yard dash, right? You can see exclusive product drops, and you're talking about an entity and fanatics that is able to bridge the gap between everything we love and sports, culture, and collecting, right? And a lot of times, this type of experience is usually done via leagues, right? All-star breaks, championship weeks, but not one entity has said, hey, we're going to bring all the sports together, all the culturally relevant people, all the culturally relevant brands to do something for the fans that will allow them literally in the same spot in Javis Center to meet their favorite folks, to see them in great conversations that they thought they would have never seen before, to play games, to be able to do things in terms of get exclusive products, right? And I'll even want to touch on the collectibles part, right? Because collectibles, like we know, That's major. it's becoming major yeah. even more, right? If you're into car collecting, right, we have Topps Hobby Hall where over 300 of the best dealers will be in the building showing off their best collection, trading cards, buying cards, revealing exclusive product drops with Tops, and there's workshops where legitimate people from the space are going to be teaching people, whether you're a newbie to someone that's a vet, how to get into collectibles and what's there to learn. So I absolutely love Fanatics Fest. This is something that I would be going to if I didn't work at Fanatics because it's literally a chance to explore my love, right, to meet my favorite folks, to see them up close, to do the games and to do all this stuff in New York City. And for me to be a part of the first one, it's incredible. And I got to give a huge salute to my teammates that have been building this. You know, it's a lot of effort that's gone into it. If you know, you know if we've been on the same team, and I'm super proud of us, and I can't wait for everybody to see it starting on August 16th. I was telling you that just in a promotion sense of this, I've been seeing this everywhere, right? And I will be there on Friday. I'm definitely coming through um, to check it out. So, as I said, Friday, August 16th, it starts. Everybody can come and check it out. Come and support it. There's tons of athletes, tons Tons. of big names. First Take. First Take is kicking off Fanatics Fest. They're kicking off. kicking it off. You pull off Friday, August 16th. Stephen A., Molly and the crew, they're going to be joined by Ryan Clark, Mad Dog, Paula Bencaro, and Drewski. They're kicking off Fanatics Fest. I feel like the next Fanatics Fest, you got to have New York game kick off Fanatics Fest. Mm, I'm just I like it, that. I'm just putting it I out like there. I like that. I'm just putting it out there. I see the vision. I aim. Hey, you were thinking at one time that you should come up here. Yeah. Now I'm thinking here, I should be at Fanatics Fest. And I like that. And you already going to be there. <laughs> I'm so this be is there. just the start. This is the build. This I like build. this. This is how I we're like this. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's New York got game. It's freaking maybe hosting one of the panels or something. Hey, the possibilities are endless, bro. Possibilities are endless. But, hey, man, this was fun. 
Yes. I thought you were the perfect person to come up here Thank at you. this time where Thank we are you. Thank you. in the year. And this will not be the last time. because Definitely gonna, not. Just to let people know, that doesn't mean Arden is, can only come up here when Fanatics Fest is going uh, down or a different time. We got to get you back. I do believe, I'm not sure about this, but you might be the first guest that we've had from the 914 on this show. Come on, man. Hey, Cam, can, can we switch to me real quick, man? Listen, it's a 914 thing. <laughs> Always and forever. It's a 914 thing, baby. I'm proud of us and what we doing. It's great, but seriously, bro, I appreciate you. Welcome. Man. Like I told you, you know, when we had the chance to chop it up at the Liberty game and multiple times, right? It's like I've had the chance to follow your career for a long time, man. I've seen you do a lot of great work with a lot of mutual peers and friends of ours. And at the end of the day, it was never a doubt if the work was dope. And I've seen you Thank do you. it across various platforms and do it in a very great way. And again, man, I'm, I'm genuinely a fan and I'm happy that we're peers in the game. Thank you, man. It's good, good to be a peer. It's also always good to connect with people, sort of like what you guys are doing yeah. with Fanatics Fest, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what this is about through media. I think it's about connecting with good people. And like we did today, having a good conversation yep. about basketball and hoops. And we're both New Yorkers. Yep. 718-914. Yeah. Uh, representing. I feel like I've never said the numbers 914 as 914, much as I've said on this show. Four side, <laughs> Westchester <laughs> County. What up? We here. Yeah, baby. We're here. So I said, I th I'm pretty sure you're the first guest from the 914 on the show. Glad it happened. Glad you were here in New York. Okay, we got to have you back, man. Absolutely. Let's do it. There's going to be a lot going on. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot to WNBA playoffs about. on the way. Maybe finals. Maybe NBA. You say the word, I'll be here, bro. For real. I'm, I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity, man. It means a lot. Nah, you're welcome, my friend. That is Arden Franklin. Check out his work. Fantastic job. One of the best when it comes to talking hoops around New York City. You heard a lot of his great insight. Also, go support this man and the work he's been doing with Fanatic Fest, which yes, starts yes. later this week, August 16th through the 18th at the Javis Center. That is Arden Franklin. He's going to be back on New York God Game. Got to have you back, my please friend. Please believe. Please believe. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Again, Dexter, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Keep up the great work. Pleasure, man. You keep up the great work as well. The Knicks are heating up. All right, by the time we return next week, the Liberty, they'll have played a couple of games post their Olympic break. So much more good basketball right around the corner. It's time to bounce. Thank you to my guests, Arden Franklin. And as always, thank you to the people who make this show look as good as it always does. My editor, Catherine Cooper, producer Brian Wachowski, and director Zach Taub. I'm Dexter Henry. We'll catch you next time on New York Got Game. And thanks for watching New York Gut Game. Boom shakalaka.